welcome to World Build with us, the podcast where we create fantastical worlds with help from you, our listeners. My name is Rob Hilferty, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Daniel Quinn and Courtney Staples. On today's episode, we are finishing out our foray into a world of artists, pranks, capitalism, but most importantly, elves and fairies or fae. Like, I would prefer fae, I guess, because I'm the one saying it. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're on to this episode. So a big thanks to our listener, John Doe. Yes, th- that's that's the name that they wanted to go by uh, for suggesting this prompt. We've actually had a lot of fun so far exploring all the really cool and interesting fae stuff. Uh, and remember that if you want us to build your world, you can always go to our website, worldbuildwithus.com. Click on the submit prompt button and we will build your world within a reasonable time frame as long as it's not creepy or weird. Uh, also, uh, this is going to be probably the last time I say it, but we have patron exclusive episodes available on our Patreon right now. We just started doing these monthly Patreon only episodes because our, well, Our listeners just wanted more of us and we're more than willing to give it to them. So if you want to be incredibly generous, you can go to our Patreon with a link for that in the description. Or if you want to come just join our Discord and chat about stuff, that's fine too. Link for that also in the description. Uh, Social media, we got the Twitter, at Let's World Build. Enough of all that. Let's get back into the episode. Last we left off, we had a twist. And the twist was, now add in some treachery. So who who wants to start us off with some treachery? Um, I would say uh, Courtney and then have Daniel go as if it's a betrayal. But I think that we're a little past that at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I can get us started off. Hell yeah, let's go. All right. So I really wanted to bring in uh, changelings into the setting, which we haven't really talked about yet. And in in like fairy lore changelings are these um essentially fairy infants who are swapped out with human infants um so like the human family raises the fairy child as their own unless they happen to find out about them yeah um so i kind of wasn't sure which direction to go in with this but i was thinking either Um, some high profile humans, including maybe even some of the ones who are leading like potential anti fairy groups are actually changelings. Um, or it could be more of a conspiracy thing where there's no confirmation yet, but there are people who keep accusing these high profile humans of being changelings, but nobody really knows for sure. Like what's going on. Oh, I really love that. (laughs) I'm, I'm just thinking changelings. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah, the concept is already like super solid, but then the concept that you're bringing in Courtney, mm-hmm. for some reason, I just love this idea that like, there's some politician who's like, so anti fairy or anti fae, yeah. anti elf, and then like, he and his wife have a changeling and he doesn't even know about it Ooh, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's all about like, I mean, we, we can even bring it into like points of power, like we were talking about previously, where you could construe that as either a prank or a seduction or mm-hmm. even both if you right. wanted to marry the concept. Mm-hmm. And actually, now that I think about it, this actually does marry really well with those kind of core concepts that we were working with last time as well. Yeah. Definitely. Are people aware of, like, is, it, is the public aware that there are fae among us? Like, or is that just, do you mean like a politician that, for example, would be like in, in cahoots with the, with the, the fae? The fae? I don't think that's something that we ever squared last episode, Mm. whether or not the Fae are actually known or unknown. So I suppose I suppose we should square that now. Mm. Um, (laughs) Like my feeling is no, because the whole concept of um, half humans is that they don't really know what Mm -hmm. they are because of their art. Right. The elves, as we've called them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, we can world of darkness, this whole thing, you know, like yeah. kind of have it be so it's hidden. Um, I do like the mm-hmm. idea of that of certain people, certain humans knowing about them that are very powerful. So like that would yeah. work with like a politician, for example, who has a change oh, yeah. child and they don't realize it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just love the idea of like a bigot who is, you know, like hoisted by their own petard. You know? <laughs> that's that's kind of my jam is what I'm getting at. 
Mm -hmm. A follow-up question on that. Like, so the, the, just to recap what you said. So like, there's some of the Fae put um, children, their children among humans, mm -hmm. and that's the changelings and that they're, they don't yeah. know that they're actually Fae, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, and then and then the fairies will take the human children to they raise take the their human own. children yeah. to their own. Okay, so mm -hmm. is that the question? Is what's the what's the the benefit of them doing this? Yeah, I'm actually not entirely sure of like the lore behind it, but in this world, it's definitely like a, a fun prank to pull, or like a <laughs> prank, if you will. <laughs> I wonder if there's like some ritualistic reason, some some magical reason why they would do this too. Mm -hmm. Well, traditionally in folklore, it's because the changelings, when they grow up, they inevitably end up going back to their witch and fae mothers. So no. it's like they give these fae children to their mothers in, you know, like knowing that they're going to be raised because for some reason, like they feed off of human love and, and blood mm -hmm. or something like that. And yeah. then inevitably when they grow up they start hearing the whispers of the fae coming from the forest okay. and then you know maybe maybe there's a, a a woman standing at the edge of the forest and a little girl sees her and she's like oh yeah i want to go and see what that's about and then eventually <laughs> they come back you know mm -hmm. so it sounds like there's some um knowledge or power to be gained or siphoned from humanity by depositing the child there um, mm -hmm. And maybe that mm -hmm. power can only be gained at a young age. Yeah, maybe it's something to having to do with like crossing between the two worlds or mm -hmm. like regaining power within one world that they normally wouldn't have. Maybe you can only cross the threshold when you're young. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. So it's like you're planting seeds of influence mm -hmm. as a fae, you know, when mm -hmm. when you can, you know, like these are sleep they're they're uh, they're literally sleeper agents in many cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it would explain too why the youth culture is the ones that are learning about what they are, you know, because they maybe mm -hmm. they're the ones who can cross the boundaries still. Mm -hmm. That's that's an interesting point. At adolescence, well. maybe they hear the call and they can come through and go back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a that's a fun concept that we can run with for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Daniel, do you have your reconciliation with the twist, the the oh betrayal? None of nothing as cool as the changeling thing. Like I'm super, I'm super psyched <laughs> for that. Like I, I don't know. I just I didn't really have anything solidified. So like I would rather expand on on that concept because I think that that um, well thematically makes sense too. Let's let's take your concept with the betrayal and see if we can't work it in and make it make more sense with the changeling stuff. Oh no, I'm just saying I didn't really have anything so. <laughs> at all. You didn't yeah, do your homework, really. Daniel. Wow, Daniel, not doing his homework. <laughs> I mean, nothing like that is substantial or matters. Like it's this vague notion of like um, the some sexy faction, goblins. Well, no, some <laughs> some faction within like the older Fey um, mm -hmm. trying to screw stuff up for you know the Fey that want to integrate with humanity, but it's just mm -hmm. like it's not very substantial. Well. Maybe you can marry those concepts with what I've got, Daniel. Also, I feel Come like on. I've said marry like 17 times already. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, my 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 reconciliation was uh, we talked about this idea that the Fae are dying off, right? Like that was one of your core tenets last episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to be that the Fae are, there are, there is a faction or a sub faction within the Fae that are directly responsible for the extinction or of the of the fae Ooh. themselves. So it is oh. self-destruction. It is self-destructive hmm. is what I'm going for. And why would they want to do that? Well, see, that's a great question, Daniel. That's why <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's a couple of options that I'm thinking of. Uh, you could have a fae who is sip who is sick of the endless cycles that they're forced to continue to experience. Mm -hmm. And so it's a literal break the cycle type situation. Mm -hmm. uh, if I, I feel like we can um, maybe make it work with Courtney's core concept here as well and involve the changelings in some way, um, maybe uh, these changelings are, maybe these Fae are in fact stealing the essence of other fae and infusing them into these changeling babies and so it's like their way of you know like we're sick of the elven world or the fae world let's go ahead and fully encroach upon the human world so like almost like terraforming the earth to to fit their own needs 
Okay, see, that's a really cool concept that I hadn't <laughs> considered before. Like magical terraforming. Mm -hmm. Like there's this idea that the Fae require a certain level of, you know, like some kind of change that happens. And I imagine that it's probably not, you know, like lizard people where we need to have global warming, <laughs> but maybe it's like a massive cultural shift that needs yeah. to happen. And yeah, that's where the changelings come in. Yeah. I'm not picturing it as like a, a physical terraforming. It's more like yes. something about yeah, the no. energy of the world. Yeah. yeah. It's a cultural or a psychic or a spiritual type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there something wrong with the phase realm that they would want to take ours? Um, I could, I mean, th there's a couple of different ways we could go with that. One, this could just be a straight up power grab by mm -hmm. this subset of Fae. Uh, there could also be a genuine problem with the Fae world itself. It could just be collapsing. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe... Maybe this is part of the natural fey cycle where there is life and death and they're in mm -hmm. or they're edging towards the death cycle. And they're like, fuck that. I'm not here to accept this, even though I know there will be a rebirth right after. I want to make sure that me, you know, it's it's the most simple, easy thing that you can imagine. Selfish survival. Like I want my consciousness, my essence to exist because I know that once the rebirth happens, I'm going to be wiped away. I'm going to be wiped clean. Mm. I like the notion of um, there being something fundamentally wrong with their realm. Um, mm -hmm. Only because that would suggest that there's something like important about the real world that that's more important than fantasy. Like it would point back mm. to like a theme. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but I don't know what that is. Like, I mean, what, what are some of the qualities of their realm? I guess that's a question. Well, I mean, I think I just created it by by yammering on, but I love the <laughs> idea that the Fae do, you know, enter cycles, you know, like they their realm in and of itself experiences a much shortened or a, a much shorter version of what our universe does, you know, where they have mm. Big Bang existence and then heat death. Like imagine that, but just faster in on an on a loop that is, you know, maybe just a couple of generations rather than billions and billions of years, you know? <laughs> well then can we say that th then this can be viewed as a form of stagnation, that the real world doesn't have a cycle like this that's actually confirmed that the, mm -hmm. the Fey world does. Mm -hmm. Like it's a it's a yes. perpetual return, but it's observed that the real world doesn't necessarily, and so maybe they're tired of being trapped, you know, in this loop. Oh. Mm. Can, can we have it be so that the human world is also responsible for this in some way? So the human observers who have seen the cycle happen, they're the ones who are like, you know that your world destroys itself after X amount of generations, right? And so, you know, like it's the human's fault that this Fey has basically gone crazy. And it's like, wait, what? Like I'm forced to do what now? And then it's just like this whisper that ends up causing this major, you know, cataclysm essentially. Well, not cataclysm, but like it's a break in their reality and they, yeah. I mean, could could their world really just be a, uh, an ideation of ours? So in the sense that, um, you know, like their world supervenes on ours. So, so their world doesn't really exist. It's contingent on ours and that that we're the ones imagining it. Yeah, I mean, hmm. what I would what, what I might even suggest doing as well, and this actually might work really well with the faction that I have uh, brought in today, but we're not there yet. Uh, but we were talking last episode about this. Essentially, these cycles are cultural cycles, right? Where you're seeing hmm. uh, trends and fashions and whatnot that evolve. And eventually there's the retro aspect to it, right? Uh, maybe we can make that direct and physical and real where the land of the Fae, the land of that realm in general is more like they are born from our creative endeavors. They are born from yeah. these things and, yeah, and they cool. are, they subsist off of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that would make them like kind of intimately linked to our our world and and maybe yeah. since they're that means they're more of a world of ideas at least conceptually 
And so there, maybe they want to have some real substance and some permanence mm-hmm. in a way that's, that's because they have a permanence, I guess, if they're, if their reality is constantly being recreated, but mm-hmm. nothing really changes. Cause if you have this eternal return, the whole, the whole horror of it is that you're just going to be back to where you started eventually. Whereas mm-hmm. if the real world's not like that, and it's the one giving birth to their world continuously through like, uh, I don't know, like the birth of ideas, they would love to like not live in their trapped little bubble of perpetual motion. Mm. Mm. Yeah. The, this, uh, I have to, I, I, I have to do this, but I mean, I don't have to, but I'm going to, <laughs> um, I want to get into my faction because I feel like what we're talking about here, we can make it so it's directly related to the Fae. Mm-hmm. Um, I love this concept of directly applying the archetypes of the Fae that we have to a, a cultural sense. And what I mean by that is what I had in mind for my faction, and it, we can we can loop back and talk more about like changelings and, you know, a little bit more of the buff that betrayal later, but I want to bring up this now because I think it's important. Um, the idea that I had was I wanted to take a Fae that I really loved and I wanted to see how I can apply it to the major themes that we had brought up last episode. So I took the Banshee, which is often a fae who is singing. It, it often represents death. It often represents, you know, the lamentation of a lost child from a mother. Uh, there, there's a number of different interpretations of the Banshee themselves. But I took this concept of the Banshee. The, the, the lamentation aspect is really what I was interested in. And I, you know, kind of merged it with this concept that I've really been kicking around in my head a lot recently, which is nostalgia and the poisonous effect of nostalgia. And I was thinking that there could be this group of Banshee-like Fae who lament not for individuals, but for past uh, trends, past mm-hmm. uh, uh you know, like they, they are nostalgic for cultural trends that have died off. And I would take something like this and I would apply it to our own universe by saying, look at the people who are so, you know, desperate for more Ghostbusters thing, but it's the Ghostbusters that they remember. Or <laughs> you can apply that to Star Wars or you can apply it to, you know, so many franchises that were massive in the 80s or even the seventies. And, you know, there, there is still this rabid fan base who wants that because it's less about the property itself and more about reliving that kind of childhood joy. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I have this group of Banshee like Fay who are all about using and feeding off of nostalgia in some way. And that's, that's the faction. And, and I'm, considering that with you know like these interpretations of fey archetypes as a creative aspect and i think that there's a reason i brought it up now and i hope that's clear from my rambling yeah i wonder um because i'm also thinking about the change things i think there's some connection to these banshees you're coming up with because Mm -hmm. i'm thinking now you've got this realm that's eternally repeating there's a desire to escape it right but there's probably some people who view it as you know very important and culturally they want to preserve it right so i'm wondering are these banshees maybe on the side of not um colonizing the earth and somehow preserving their realm and maybe they're like they're the mothers who send the changelings out among the humans to learn or, or maybe maybe it's the opposite maybe they send the, the, the changelings out among the humans to learn about human permanence and bring it back to their realm and maybe change their own realm rather than abandon it so they're oh, leeching onto that nostalgia i don't know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i i hadn't originally thought of it with the changeling concept in mind i had it more like you know these are beings that are so enamored with the past that even five minutes ago they feel a deep sorrow for you know and so uh there there's something to that that might be the case right um i don't know courtney what do you think i think it's an interesting concept about like almost like cultural stagnation and not wanting to build off of what's already there just wanting to continuously repeat what you've already experienced in a way um and i i feel like they would be at odds with the um the group that we talked about last time the sort of underground like 
graffiti artists, performance mm. art type people. Um, since those ones are like very avant-garde and always on the verge of something new. And these, this group is more like, no, we, we have to stick with whatever was like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, however long. So last episode, we were kind of talking about like the sun and the moon uh, and as, mm -hmm. as like the major cycles and whatnot. Right. Mm -hmm. And as well as life and death. I mean, we talked about both, but we never really talked about the in between the interstitial nature of the elves, which are the dusk and dawn. And I imagine that we can easily represent these here with, you know, these nostalgia hounds are the ones who are the order of the dusk who want to mm. maintain some kind of a nostalgia. Whereas the, the folks that we're talking about, these avant-garde artists, you know, the, the, the performance artists and whatnot, they could be those of the dawn, you know, they're, I mean, mm -hmm. literally dawn of a new era, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we, I, I, uh, one of my tenets was the, the courts of these dawn and dusk, right? They were half elf. They, they were elves. They were half fae. So does that mm -hmm. mean that the half fae are changelings or is this a separate kind of thing that we're talking about here? I saw the changelings uh, as separate from yeah. the elves. Okay. Like they're well, they're still full blooded fae, like fae, but they they just are experiencing the world in a in a more human way. Yeah, because they're not half breeds, right? They're fully right, they're yeah. actual full fae. They're just hidden yeah. among humans. Yeah. Don't realize mm -hmm. what they are. Mm -hmm. I imagine exactly. the fae like are kind of like um more intensely magical sort of things like if you've got you know your classic i don't know like elf race character they're just trying to like generally like humans but they've got some extra abilities but it seems mm -hmm. like the are fae are like really uniquely magical things mm -hmm. yes whereas yeah. the half humans that which we're calling elves the half fae are indistinguishable from humans except for their extraordinary talents that they learn right which is why i'm kind of thinking about whether or not we call them changelings but if you want to have the changelings be full fey i'm totally okay with that as well mm -hmm. um I, I imagine that if we were to do that then these changelings are rather are, are unique in the fact that they are fey who are able to live and subsist in the human world so yeah. Yeah. what you were saying daniel previously in or what, what you were saying in the previous episode daniel is you want the fey to be dying off dying or really rare maybe they're just extremely rare in the human realm maybe that's kind of to to reach all the way back in the past is grab that concept and be it's like yeah changelings are rare you know and so mm -hmm. or, or something like that I, I don't know maybe we can kind of talk about that a little bit more well i mean they can still they can maybe the cycle the, the, the dying off part is meaning that the they're losing kind of their own I don't know. Like if, if their world is if, is infinite and permanent and endlessly cyclical, that doesn't mean it's not decaying and stagnant and has nothing new in it. That could mm -hmm. be the, what the me meaning of um, of uh, them becoming extinct is. So, like, I'm thinking, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's some conceptions of the end of the universe is that everything just kind of peters out into nothing and it becomes a soup of disconnected particles, right? <laughs> That's mm -hmm. one projection for the mm -hmm. end of the universe. Maybe that is a potential state that the endless cycle of the Fey realm will achieve eventually. It's just going to take a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, like, the changelings embedded in the Earth, like the, the, the hidden Fey, like, who are growing up as humans, they don't realize what they are, they can take something back to the realm of the Fae that might stop that dis the dissolution mm -hmm. into nothing mm -hmm. because they're learning something from humans and humans don't have that same fate. Like their world isn't bound by a cycle. So I'm wondering if like, that's what's special about the Fae that live among the humans versus the half humans who are human and Fae, but they're living among mm -hmm. the humans. I don't know what their relationship is to each other. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I, I see what's going on. Um, it is a little confusing, not going to lie. Because um, <laughs> I think the problem is we don't have a strong distinction or role for the half a versus the changelings. Because the half a seem to be our punk kids who are learning what they are, right? Learning about the fey realm. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're suggesting that they have a way of possibly reaching the fey realm too. But we also mm -hmm. have regular old fey who are hidden among the humans who don't realize what they are. 
which right. is pretty much the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I get what you're saying, how it's right. Yeah, that, why that's why I think them, in, you know? right. That's why I think it makes more sense mm-hmm. to merge them in concept mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there's there's so much like mirroring that we're seeing here. Yeah. There's so much. Yeah, that's true. There's so much overlap that it's like, why not just marry the two concepts? Well, God damn okay, how about this? Why not just take, merge the two concepts? Yeah, yeah take which take which we could take what Courtney's what Courtney called with the merge. It. Like, let's say that it's not that they take a child of their own and hide it among the humans. It's one of the fae mates with a human, and now that child is hidden among the humans, and it's a half fae. That's the changeling. So the half a are changelings then. So how you could do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they hear the call eventually when they get to adolescence being half a and they're able to cross over and they're able to bring back the knowledge of the human race to them. You know, it, we we're focused on this half thing like you have that the fae have to mate with humans in order for them to create offspring. But because the fae themselves are ethereal concepts that are subsistent on like creativity and art like we can just take the physical aspect out of it like i don't think there needs to be mating at all Mm. i think that we can make this more conceptual perhaps so in what way do they couple with humans (laughs) (laughs) okay hold on what do the fey love they love making bargains and they're tricksy Mm -hmm. and they're mischievous all that good stuff right we can make well, they, we, for- we said that they like to create truth out of lies, which is a summary of what you just said. And, yes. And <laughs> yeah. and not only that, but they're really into seduction as well, mm-hmm. right? Seduction mm-hmm. and pranks. Maybe the Fae themselves, because they because they're essentially just conceptually deeply into art and, and creativity uh, on in some level. They can go to specific humans and they're like, hey, you're firstborn. I'll give you power. I'll give you creativity. But that firstborn is mine. Ooh. And and they, they don't like it's you're going to raise it. It's going to be yours, whatever. That's fine. But in some way, they imbue their essence into that human's firstborn. Mm-hmm. And that's how you get changelings. And that's how you get elves or half fae. I like that a lot because that also ties in with what we had talked about last time with sort of the differing nature of humans and fae, like how humans have this this greed kind of naturally to them. Mm-hmm. And um, that that certainly plays a role here because I imagine the, the fae are like offering um, these parents like something very desirable for that bargain. Um, so they're they're playing on the human's greed and kind of using that for their own seduction and pranks. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. And there's and, different ways too you can interpret it, right? So like it can be a bargain, mm-hmm. like you said. And if they're if it's a metaphorical thing, it could be actual coupling with the human. It depends on how yeah. Faye wants to approach the human and mm-hmm. offer its corruption, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, what people want, what they desire. Is, and, and that's what's being offered by the Fae. I think that can be really fun because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of art has to do with passion and desire. So if you want to take those concepts, then the Fae embody that, right? They're like, oh, yeah, I'm passion. I'm desire. I'm creativity. I'm all these things in one, just in a conceptual level. You know, so I would imagine that the Fae could come to someone who's like, I mean, if you wanted to have it be really sad and desperate, you could be like a mother who just hasn't been able to have a healthy mm. birth, right? Yeah. Or And so it's like, you can have a healthy baby and that's all I'm going to give you. And then that's it, right? And so like, bam, you've got that one. On, on the opposite end, that is like, just kind of like creepy and weird. You can go to somebody who's like a sad, lonely virgin, you know, like, who's, and be like, I'm going to give you like a wife or at least the ability to get a wife you know, and it imbues them with something. And, but, but again, that child is now theirs and yeah. you have the spectrum of reasons and desires like that really play up the Fae in like this kind of interesting way. Mm-hmm. Okay. We, it, it took us like a half an hour, <laughs> but I feel like this has been one of the more productive half an hours that we've had. We've like, I feel mm-hmm. like we've yeah. nailed down a lot of the concepts that were still kind of floating a little bit. Uh, so do we want to wrap anything up before we move fully into this concept, uh, or, or rather, do we want to talk about anything else before we move on to our factions more? 
I think I'm good. summarizing what we just decided would be helpful. So we've got <laughs> a realm of, of cyclical unchangingness that potentially can dissolve into nothing because it's dying off. We've got Fae who take many forms. They cross over into the human world because they're interested in our ability to not be trapped by a cycle. Um, they can, um, uh, quote unquote, infect or enchant humans um, by means of a bargain, giving them something they want, and so that they can then um, claim the child that they have. Those children are the changelings. Mm -hmm. The changelings with and adolescents will hear the call of um, the Fey world, and then they have to make a choice as to whether they want to cross over and return. Um, and potentially that brings back something about human culture that can alter the cycle of the Fey world. I think that's about mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There, I mean, there's a lot to that, but like, I, I feel, and also it does make me think like, maybe, maybe the, the, the cyclical nature isn't all encompassing. So maybe the, some of the fae, maybe like the, the lords and ladies or the kings and queens, or maybe even just particular types of fae remember as the cycles continue, but like all of everything else melts away eventually. It's just that mm -hmm. these ones remember it, it, like the highest ones. And, and maybe we can talk about like, you know, going back again to last episode, how they gain favor by pranks and, and seduction. Maybe the ones in charge are the ones who've proven themselves, you know, the best at these things. Um, I, 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 my point is, my, my point is that I like the concept that, there are those who remember even as the cycles continue. Yeah. Oh, sure. Like maybe the really powerful ones. But and then you also yeah. met, and then there's of course there's the, the, the courts, which are, correlate to the the moon and sun and dusk and dawn. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the changeling courts are the middle ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. and so I assume that's the ones who returned. Like the ones who remember, like they decide to return to Fey World, they probably make up those courts. Oh, that's so, and that's so mm -hmm. cool because then you call them changelings because the changelings come back. Like and they yeah. have change to contribute. Uh, there yeah. you go. Because <laughs> it doesn't mean that they're shapeless. It means that they're introducing change. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, we did it, you guys. We it's did great. it. It's a successful great. podcast. We'll just cancel the rest of the episode. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> I know that we have a bunch more to get through. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> let's, let's continue on. Because you guys have factions if you did your homework, Daniel. But no, no I'm kidding. Uh, but, <laughs> no, but you have factions that we can get into. So we just made massive monumental changes to the world. Tell me how your factions fit in. Courtney, start us off. All right. So mine's not like super developed, but um, I am sort of drawn to the idea of like people who want to be something they're not and what that means with like humans versus fairies and um so i wanted a group of humans who modify themselves to be more fey like or pretend to be fey interesting how do they go about doing this um i mean with physical modifications i imagine there's like plastic surgery involved um mm. to make them more attractive more beautiful um, and then with behaviors, I'm not sure. I, I feel like they would sort of latch on to certain stereotypes to, to replicate. So is this sort of like extreme body modification? Like the, the people who like, there's, there, there are the people who have like transformed themselves into like tigers essentially where they get, <laughs> um, you know, like yeah, tattoos like and, and plastic surgery to have whiskers and stuff like that. Yeah. It could be something like that, or, um, just thought of, uh, what was it, Rachel Dalzal, the mm -hmm. white woman who essentially pretends to be black? Translationalist. And... Yeah, translationalist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So just something like compels these humans to to want to be fey so much that they they actively change themselves and pretend to be this other group. Are they um uh, so I, since we know that fake kind is hidden, are they mm -hmm. perhaps some kind of like counterculture that is believes they exist or that knows they exist? Could be, yeah, like related to some sort of conspiracy thing or, um, you know, maybe at some point a human got a glimpse of a fairy and ever since there's just been this growing movement of 
people who believe that it's actually real and um, maybe that by changing themselves, they can become more close to this other realm. I could see them being led by a changeling who didn't go back. Ooh. Yeah. That could yeah. be fun. Thematically, what I really like about this concept, right, is when you think about what the Fae are, they are essences of certain, or they're rather representations of certain essences, right? So mm-hmm. they, may, maybe what we can do is we can make it so the Fae themselves are incapable of change. And mm-hmm. the humans, and they, they envy the humans in that way. It's like, you can change whatever you want to be. If you're a banker and you want to be a stand-up comedian, you can do that. Mm-hmm. But if I represent nostalgia or uh, if I represent envy, I can't suddenly be anger. I can't suddenly be mm-hmm. joy because my essence doesn't work that way. Like, my, like yeah. that's that kind of concept works in here where it's like, so you see these this faction that you're talking about here, Courtney, is kind of like a weird perversion of that, where they're mm-hmm. envious of what the Fae are. It's like a mirror. So it's like a dark mirror to the Fae themselves in many ways, I think. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, so these, these people, right, mm-hmm. are the, is it basically any human who approaches or, or is affected by the fae or 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 like is it like a virus in some ways that this faction is like like they're so enamored they're so uh you know taken by the fae world itself that they can't help but modify themselves in some way i wonder if it originally started as a prank by a fae like Mm. some a fairy just wanted to kind of create chaos and create rifts among people and decided to sort of sprinkle this idea around that, oh, if you change yourself, then, then maybe you will actually have a chance of like crossing over essentially. I love the idea of the Fae influencing the mortal realm through mimetic thought. Like that concept to me is like, it's like a contagion or it's like a meme, you know, like, I think that's Mm -hmm. really fascinating. Mm -hmm. I think it's, and I think color wise like in terms of um giving the setting a, a feel um it's not cyberpunkish but it is definitely like a modern i could picture these kind of characters appearing in you know your your techno club uh mm-hmm. with the the bdsm heavy plastic leather oh, yeah. kind of pvc look or yeah. the body modification group like they're mixed among those people they're an even deeper subculture you yeah. know so it, it suggests that this side of setting could be placed you know in a a densely populated metro rather than the midwest like that's you're kind yeah, of getting right, a sense of yeah. where you can tell these stories through it right right it's definitely Absolutely. more like an, an urban modern or like near future kind of vibe mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah i daniel i do love the concept of like merging like different subcultures together mm-hmm. as well like i mm-hmm. i have like strong aesthetic vibes that i'm getting from like looking at kink or looking at like rave subcultures and stuff like that, where it's like, Mm -hmm. I could see these people like who are so obsessed with these types. And and actually you could even have them be obsessed with different types of a different courts of Fae as well. I think that'd be really interesting. Oh yeah. True. True. Yeah. Uh, So, so like these representations of, and, and actually maybe they're the, 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 the faction themselves, no, I suppose. Actually, hold on. I'm I'm getting all over the place because I'm really excited about the concept. So, Courtney, <laughs> when you say they're a faction, are they mm-hmm. united in any way outside of the fact that they're ina- like they're obsessed with the Fey, or is it like they're a group with a leader and stuff like that? Like how how would how do you see them organized? Yeah, I don't picture a, like a single leader for the group. I feel like it the power is a bit more spread out than that. Um, just mm-hmm. because of the nature of the group, it's more of like a a social connection thing as opposed to a an organized cult almost. Um, but I imagine that there would be people who wield more power ultimately because of maybe how many changes they've made to themselves and like how dedicated they are to this idea. 
I, I could see that being a yes as, as an answer because <laughs> I could see them there being a trickster changeling who maybe either mm-hmm. was responsible for creating the myth originally or maybe wasn't and lies about it and now has a, a bunch of groupies. But also mm-hmm. that this group, independent of that leader, if it is a leader, believes in the changelings or believes in the fae separately. And so they're disorganized and they have human leaders who are maybe like researchers who are trying to figure this out. Um, so it's like a yes, like maybe they're, they're organized and not organized. Like there's not one unified mm-hmm. group, Ooh. you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. How do you guys feel about this idea? Um, there is essentially a leader type person who is like, yeah, there's this fae and they have the influence. So it, 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 they're, they're essentially creating a fake fay to garner support and garner <laughs> fervor from other people. Yep. That absolutely <laughs> so what yeah. happened. There's MLMs yeah. in yeah. the side of it. Yeah. 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 Like, so like maybe it's a changeling who's trying to become full fay by mm-hmm. essentially pranking all of these people into believing uh-huh. in a false <laughs> god that is the fay, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Oh, man. That's... <laughs> And not only that, we can we can reach all the way back to the uh, to the twist and add in some treachery because you know, like, why not, right? It's yeah. kind of like in um, and I don't play Vampire the Masquerade, but in in vampire culture, like the concept of the thrall or the um, mm. what do you really call them? The one who the human who is in service of a vampire, yeah, the Renfield, um, yeah, like, or yeah, <laughs> Renfield, it's like the original, right? <laughs> so yeah, you know, like exactly. um. Um, like think, that, but think, in this case, I think Thrall is the correct one. Yeah, yeah but that like Renf- yeah. Renfield is like the the emblematic one. He's the <laughs> he's the one that everyone knows. You know, the OG Thrall. Um, exactly. But in this case, at least exactly. they're not like totally in in Thrall of the of the changelings. Some of them maybe, but. They they they're almost like weeaboo changelings or yes. weeaboo fae. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is perfect. I'm just really into fae culture. Um, <laughs> you know, like that's the type of right. Oh my like, god, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I could yeah, also see dope. the the changeling leader like doing this potentially out of spite towards what they are in a way, like um, knowing that they're the product of like a a parent who made some sort of deal that like almost sacrificed the changeling in a way before they were even born and kind of knowing that would sort of skew your your view on life and humanity and fey and everything if they were to find that out anyway i i'm also thinking now that we can even take this a step further and we can also have it be like so the the representation that they're talking about of the fae could it be, again I, i'm just spitballing here could we make it like a hollow live or a vtuber or like a hologram <laughs> situation where they're creating essentially like a living god slash pop star yes. that is like you, they, they've just created and again we can pull in the creativity aspect of it mm. and like why not right like i think yeah. that's something that we can absolutely do here yeah, I love that idea of them being like a YouTuber, or Twitch streamer, or something, gaining this this notoriety online. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we really, yeah. So you start with a with a core concept that's strong enough, Courtney, and we'll absolutely make it something <laughs> like a VTuber, <laughs> Fae, Trickster God. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so Daniel, what what are we adding to the gumbo we got going on here? What do you got for us for a faction? Um, so the, interestingly enough, the, uh, this connects to a digital the uh, explanation of things. Mm-hmm. I was I was thinking that we've got to bring in the blockchain somehow. No, the mysterious, no. No. mysterious oh, no. blockchain. No. So, oh god, You're um, really and I'm not seeing us right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not going to bother with explaining what the blockchain is. You can just Google, just Google like <laughs> Eli Five blockchain, and you'll get something out of that. But <laughs> suffice it to say, it's a digital ledger of transactions. That's really all it is. So, so what I'm going to say is, I'm imagining these like Fay librarian types. Um, and I don't know whether the Fae librarians themselves are like digitized, like kind of like, you know, like holocron sort of, uh, representations or whether they're actual mm-hmm. Fae, what doesn't really matter. But the concept is that the Fae lineage is, um, something that shouldn't be, um, ever, uh, um, 
how do you say, um, known falsified. And so Mm. it needs to be something that's actually true and preservable. And since we've introduced this concept of cycles, preservable between cycles so that they can know the actual passage of time. And so there's this fey blockchain that's been created in the human realm because they can't (laughs) keep it in the, in the, in the cycle of their Mm. own realm since it's, continuously changes and these librarians are the ones responsible for recording the transactions on it of like births and and changes in the lineages that way there is a a permanent record of of fey existence but the irony is that it's preserved not in their realm but in the human realm in their technology in human technology interesting Mm. interesting Mm. so the faction that we're dealing with here are the librarians themselves right Mm -hmm. yeah and and i bet that there's if you want to have nfts i bet that there are um uh mockeries made of of the blockchain like of the the lineage blockchain by creating these um because really an nft is like a a digital representation of something in the physical world that's then sold and given its own unique value so perhaps like there are NFTs of, of Fae, since they're the things really on the blockchain. <laughs> and so some of these, I don't know if they're rogue librarians, or maybe it's some other faction that mocks them, where they create digital representations of the Fae themselves. And that's what they're selling on a separate blockchain. Well, oh, well didn't wow. we talk about that last we episode? We did bring where... up NFTs, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we talked about like the idea that NFTs and like algorithmic art is essentially starting to kill the Fae. Or, like, oh, yeah, devalues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So how how can we, I mean, what what do we want to talk about with those two concepts? And like, is uh, I, I'm really fascinated by the librarians because on one in one hand, right, they have to be aware of the Fey, but they also have to be they can't be the Fey themselves, right? Because they can't exist outside of the Fey wild or the Fey world. I originally conceived them as being Fey, but I mm-hmm. like that too, because um, unless they're changelings, they can't reside, like you're saying, in the human world, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So so they'd either have to be changelings. They're humans. Humans, or like a third thing that we haven't even talked about, mm-hmm. like that is <laughs> perhaps higher conceptually than what we've talked about previously. Mm-hmm. I, I like the concept of them being humans, because... Now you've got these humans who, for some reason, are beholden to making sure the record of Fae kind exists, and they're trusted with this really important knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Is every NFT the Fae history, and it's just been... um, Hold on, I'm trying to think about this. Like, I, I feel like in some way... There have been like a, there has been like a, an Urfe or one of the high court who have tricked humans into believing this lie for generations just to make sure that <laughs> did Faye even exist? Or, or hold on, I, I'm getting way too excited here. I'm I have this idea that just remembering the Faye is what gives them life. Mm-hmm. So this concept is the first Faye is the one who tricked a human into recording their existence. And mm-hmm. so maybe generations and generations ago, this happened. I, I don't know. Are, do you do you understand what I'm trying to put yeah. out here? Or am I, I just was fucking like, rambling? No, no. I was also thinking along the same lines because we had talked about like humans are, their ideas are the source of the Fae more or less. Mm-hmm. So also wondering how like having NFTs that like, kind of reproduce the fey how that would work would that create another offshoot like separate realm or separate race or sort of skewed reality of cyber fey cyber (laughs) fey well we want to make sure that there's a distinction between two things right so i think what you're saying is like the memory of the fey among humans keeps them alive or gives them power in some way right and Mm -hmm. i think the blockchain would do that by default because it's an Mm -hmm. incorruptible record right but we have this separate thing that's the NFTs, which are also on a blockchain of their own. But the NFTs seem to be they're like digital signatures of a mm-hmm. of a physical thing, right? Yeah. So so is that like what these two separate things like seem to function in a similar way? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is this the most esoteric setting we've done so far? <laughs> Ha. I don't think so. I don't think it's the, the most abstracted one. We've had some really weird yeah. ones that were. Yeah, that's worse. that's true. That's true. Yeah, because uh, what we're talking about, I feel like 
if you were like listening to this out of order and you listen to this one, you're like, what the fuck is anyone talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's when we think about this blockchain concept, it's not too complicated. If you think so, like it's like if subtract out block blockchain, right? And imagine you just had this book that was incorruptible. Like it couldn't you couldn't falsify things right. in this book. And they were taking a record of each birth. Like it's the same mm-hmm. thing. We're just elevating it into a digital realm where everyone can verify it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. This is just the newest, you know, this is the, uh, this is the Dawn court, right? Where it's the new, Mm -hmm. it's the progressive, it's what's modern. Mm -hmm. This is just the newest iteration of it, the blockchain type thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a book in the past, or maybe it was something that was like, yeah, we got this newfangled computer, you know? Oh, (laughs) can can we have it? So like every generation, it changes whatever the thing is. So now it's a blockchain. (laughs) But previously, it was like, it, this is the iPad mini that has all of Faye's existence on it. <laughs> you know, it's I mean, it, yeah. The yeah. key to it is that it can't be falsified, which is mm-hmm. really right. the opposite of what Faye's power is. That's the mm-hmm. whole That's the whole principle. Well, that's true, yeah. I was, yeah. was, was going to say, like, yeah, wouldn't, the, wouldn't some, at least one fairy out there be like, their ultimate prank would be to somehow mm-hmm. corrupt this? And they'd be trying yes. to do that forever? I bet. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's the ultimate pr- like that's yeah. that's that yeah. is not only the ultimate prank, but it's essentially their true Ragnarok as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because what we've talked about previously, the kind of concept that I had in mind that I really want to run with is these Fey are essences of certain concepts, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, if you change something on the ledger, then that or it, on the blockchain, then that changes the essence of what they are. It essentially destroys them as they know themselves. Yeah, because mm-hmm. if you think about it, like, I don't know how long this thing has existed, only as long as blockchains could exist, but the ledger could have preceded it. But if if there was some concept that has been forgotten in human consciousness, but it's been recorded in the ledger, metaphysically, it only exists in the ledger. So to change yeah. the ledger would be to remove the concept. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe this kind of progressive, maybe this kind of progression is a way to protect that. So it changes technologies as technology Mm -hmm. changes maybe we can go all the way back and think about you know cave paintings and stuff like that where all of those red hands or all of the peoples Mm -hmm. that are in the caves in the norwegian in norway maybe all of that is like the original fey ledger in some way the original Mm -hmm. fey blockchain and they've always been deposited truth into the human world because they know they can't get anywhere else yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) and so it's like you have to maintain this kind of update every every so often Mm -hmm. be like okay all of fey kind is getting switched over to this particular thing now Mm -hmm. and it's still on you know it's like it you still can't change it but you know that that's the concept yeah absolutely in a way, then I wonder if the Fae are also influencing um, human kind of technological advancement. Because if they if they latch on to like a certain technology first to do their recordings, would that like further it in human in the human realm? Like, were they the first ones to really jump on the internet or mm. something like that? Huh. I, I'm thinking about that. I think that's really interesting yeah. because maybe the Fae can only influence creativity so much mm-hmm. where it's like, they don't know what they're going to get, but they know that the humans can produce it. Mm, yeah. You know, like they, I can only inspire you to the point. And so that's why they're also kind of ethereal in that sense, because the Fae themselves don't know what the fuck they're doing. They just know <laughs> that they can inspire and influence humans in a sense. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm that's actually kind of cool because it also it really as you said Courtney it heavily implies that Faye have like way more influence on Mortal Realm that we've kind of previously established mm-hmm. yeah I mean like they, they would have were, like they were the ones who uh, decided on Blu-ray over whatever the other competitor was <laughs> or it wasn't <laughs> pornography that decided that. oh um, <laughs> maybe that's why there's so much like parallel invent in, like invention and stuff oh, like that yes yeah, yeah it's like okay we got two things coming out at the same time and then it's just like oh yeah that's the fey the fey influence is trying to get that concept <laughs> birthed into the universe that's really cool yeah. As, yeah. as long as there is human if the origin of the, of the fey world depends in some way intimately on human thought mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. their origin is our origin you know yeah yeah, yeah absolutely 
Um, guys, we have talked for nearly an hour about this. And we still have like a plot line to go and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I have to imagine that we have to have the main plot line be about this blockchain now, right? Mm, yeah. The first thing that popped into my head is that this quest is going to involve the the blockchain transitioning into a new technology and everything like everything that's surrounding that is like super high stakes it is literally the entirety of the fae themselves that it, that's on the line oh, I've, I've got an answer to that for you <laughs> let's fucking go daniel what do you got oh well, are we still doing our other factions though we we did all the factions i only gave one faction yeah, we only we do were, one faction. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> some reason, some so reason you, I thought we gave two factions. All right. Do you have a second one? <laughs> uh, I do. I, well, I can incorporate it into this. Okay, so rather than, because blockchain is really on the cutting edge of technology, but the mm -hmm. fear for blockchain is if you have something like quantum computing or some form of computing that makes um, the the work required to um, decrypt stuff in the blockchain trivial, then it would make the, the blockchain corruptible. Then you'd be able to mm. change, you, you would be able to falsify transactions. It's really the only reason why it's, it's uncorruptible is because the math is so complicated and the computers we have can't crunch that data fast enough or doesn't have enough memory to really do the work to falsify mm -hmm. the blockchain. So maybe the threat is computing changing such that the record is going to be possible to falsify. Um, and the the faction I had that could help with that is when well, we, we kind of talked about this already, but thinking like, you know, like a Mr. Robot kind of hacker group who are um, changelings, you know, who um, are trying to figure out what this is all about. Like they hear the mm -hmm. call, they're not sure if they want to go back, then they're trying to learn about changeling kind. And so a bunch of them have gotten together and they've made their little hacker group. Are they white hat or black hat hackers? A mix, I would say. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So how does that work? Because traditionally, right, white hat just try and stop the black hats, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm wondering, maybe they had to get some of the black hats because the black hats are the ones who really know what they're doing. And the white hats have operated within the confines of what's ethical. But this is something that threatens everything, right? So not just... Gotcha. You know, it's 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 the the truth of the world is at stake, and so is the truth of the fake kind. If this blockchain is breached, you know. Okay, can we have it so the white hat and the black hat hackers are also just representatives of their respective courts of fey? Oh yeah, oh, that's yeah, that would make sense. Because yeah. it it, it I'm, I yeah. see that segue. I'm like, why the fuck not? That totally makes sense. You know. Um, okay, cool. So we've got that down. So we've got this group of hackers who are trying. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to protect it from what exactly? I mean, someone or someplace is developing a technology that will make the computing power trivial, that will make it possible to falsify the blockchain, which will not only destroy the phase blockchain, like in its integrity, but markets all over the world, I'm mean, assuming in this near future society, depend mm -hmm. on blockchains. Like we could assume in this reality that the economy has shifted to the blockchain. Like the dollar is now the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So the whole global economy is in, in trouble. Okay. So this is basically, I, I what I'm seeing here is essentially the birth of Skynet almost. Right? <laughs> yeah. So like that's AI or, Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's the birth of, so can't we just make this Terminator 2 Judgment Day, but with Faye and hackers and shit? I feel like we can make this happen. <laughs> it feels more Fight Club to me than like physical post-apocalypse in the sense that like the structures we know about that keep us safe, like the, the banking structures and for the Faye, the truth of their lineage is about to be destroyed if this technology is unleashed. Mm-hmm. See, I, I see the extinction of the Fae mirrored with T2 Judgment Day's extinction of the human race. Oh, so, true. Yeah, it yeah. is kind of like their extinction if if the blockchain is, 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 is ruined or falsified, you know? Yeah. And, and maybe it's not like an immediate thing where it's like, you know, this thing's created and they're all dead. It's this thing is created and immediately goes to war with the Fae because it sees it as some kind of anomaly that needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. this quantum computer is in fact trying to solve Faye out of existence. <laughs> it's 
Maybe the Fae just represent chaos to its axiomatic like law in some way. I don't, I don't know if I want it to have its own intelligence. You know what I mean? Like, I think even if some corporation developed this technology in itself, it's not evil. It's just that the use of it will really fuck shit up. You know? Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? Like, it's kind of like an atom bomb. Like, it, it created all kinds of practical applications that are great, but it's also a horrifying weapon, you mm. know? Well, well, that's what I mean. Like, this thing isn't alive. It just sees yeah. the Fae as, like, a corruption or something that needs to be fixed. It's not trying to, like, demolish an entire species. It's just like, oh, I see this data as corrupt or wrong. Time to fix it. Time to solve it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, what I guess what I'm resistant to is giving it a, a persona. Like, because what that does is it subtracts out the actors. Like, whereas we could have right. the people using it be the villain. So for example, you could have like the Banshees, for example, wanting to um, not let this technology come to fruition because it'll ruin their nostalgia. Yeah. So they're really the villains or, I mean, the heroes. Or you could have like maybe some changeling who wants to get rid of the Fey realm and he's the one who's trying to use the technology. That right. way it doesn't have a consciousness. Mm-hmm. So you, you want it strictly to be a tool. To be used by yeah. both. Okay. Because then we can focus on like the other factions we made and how they're involved. Okay. So, so I suppose the question that I have, right? Where, if this is just a tool, isn't its creation inevitable? If it has yes. practical, mm-hmm. practical uses. So what's to, what's to stop this from happening over and over and over again? By creating this tool, aren't you damning the Fae to extinction one way or the other? Like, it's, it, I feel like it's an inevitable death. Mm-hmm. Unless, That's like bad. You said, like, unless, like you said, that they, the, cha- the ledger itself has to evolve again. Okay, so so maybe that's the end game that we can kind of talk about where mm-hmm. this thing, maybe maybe the heroes recognize that there's few, their efforts are futile. And so yeah. it's a matter of we have to just move them. And it's a race against mm-hmm. the clock in order to get them to a new type of ledger or a new yeah. type of blockchain, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, I imagine that this has probably happened many, many times before. And yeah. the Fae are like, I'm used to this. It's still nerve wracking every single time it happens, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm I'm much more pro, I'm much more uh, okay with that concept because uh-huh. at least there's more there's different and new stakes here. I'm cool with that. Okay. Oh my god, it's like remember Batman begins and it's like um, what's his name um, Ray Shagul when he's talking about like you know we've we've done this many times before wiped out half of humanity and he talks about all the incidences and, you know mm-hmm. I can see the hacker group getting together and it's like this has happened many times before the threat of Fey World you know being you know because of a new technology we've got to we've got to create the next ledger basically before it's mm-hmm. too late that kind of thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and maybe okay maybe the consequence maybe the twist for this particular thing is. We've been making the new, the updated version because we knew this was happening, but mm-hmm. we have less time than we thought, or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, you know, maybe yeah. that's yeah. the twist. Maybe this, maybe this evil Elon. Okay, redundant, but maybe this <laughs> evil Elon Musk character <laughs> steps up and is like, "Hey guys, I paid a bunch of people so I could get credit for this idea," you know, <laughs> and, and it's like. Also, it's getting pushed out six months early, you know, like that type of thing. And so now there's a panic and now there's a, oh shit, we have to move this now. It has to be done now, you know, that type of thing. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if, um, if Fae world, if the Fae realm is destroyed, if changelings themselves are harmed in some way, because are they like, they're half Fae? Yeah. Or there's some connection to the fairy realm. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that they would get hurt if that were to happen. But maybe they don't know it. Yeah, it would explain why the hackers have to work together because their their own lives are at stake. Yeah, Our that makes sense mm-hmm. to me. I, yeah. I like that concept. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm 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 not sure because them being cut off from the Fey doesn't mean that it would be harmful necessarily, right? Could Maybe it's like they just get. Yeah, that's kind mm-hmm. of what I'm thinking. Where it's like like half a lobotomy essentially, where you yeah. can you can function and still be, but it's like wow, I used that's to. That's harmful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. 
Yeah, like you're still alive. No, but, but you're not in my person. mind, I'm thinking harmful as in like half of my soul is like oh, dusted, no. you know? Like I mean, it's kind of like if you lost your, let's say you're a brilliant pianist or something and if the fate world destroy, you lose your talent, you know, that'd be pretty horrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, 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 I see it more as like, who you are is being stripped away and that's why yeah, yeah. yeah i can exactly. i can see that for sure yeah oh y'all guys it's it it really has been a journey and um you know uh i think now is a good time that we can pivot over to the end of the episode because my god uh we're already over an hour according to our timer here and uh yeah that's what we're gonna do so a big thanks again to John Doe for submitting this prompt. I, I can I, I I can say for sure it's been a hell of a lot of fun to talk about this concept. And remember that if you want us to, if you want to give us joy, if you want to have us have fun with your concept, there's only like three or four ways that you can make that happen. One of them, you go to our website worldbuildwithus.com. You can submit a prompt, and we will do your world building concept as an episode, as long as it's not creepy or weird. Uh, if you want to tell us by social media, go to a, go, go follow us over at let's world build on Twitter. You can send us a DM that we will occasionally check. If you want to come join our discord and kind of just chat it out with us, we got a link for that in the description. And if you really want to get our attention, you can go to our Patreon where we have Patreon exclusive content coming out now and you know, if you're feeling particularly generous, you can give us money and su submit a world prompt that way. Link for that also in the description. Regardless, that'll do it for this episode of World Build With Us. Remember that we love you very much. We're going to get through this together until next week. <laughs> <laughs>